Welcome to another mythology video. Have a look at this. What do you see? Yes, some cool mythology toys in the background, but ignore those. Yes, I know it's hard, but ignore the toys. Focus on the black UFO at the bottom. On top of the UFO is a circular mirror and on top of the mirror is a coin featuring pretty Princess Leia and her trusty robot R2-D2. Now let me pick up the coin. What? My fingers are passing right through the coin. Is this some kind of Jedi mind trick? What I want to do today is to explain our ghostly Princess Leia as well as a closely related way to conjure up ghostly voices. It's really cool to be able to create these ghosts, but today's maths is also super applicable. In fact, if this math ceased to exist from one day to the next, you wouldn't recognize the world you live in anymore. Well, let's get to it. It's all got to do with our high school friend, good old x squared. Sticking with movie references, x squared is a little bit like Clark Kent. Most of Clark's friends think they know all there is to know about him, but only a select few are aware that he's actually Superman. Same with X-squared, which also has some hidden superpowers that hardly anybody knows about. Okay, here we go. Did you know that the point 0, 1 fourth and the horizontal at y is equal to minus 1 fourth are super special for the parabola y is equal to X-squared? The point is called the focus and the line is called the directrix of the parabola. What's special is that every point on the parabola is exactly the same distance from the focus and the directrix. So these two distances there are always the same. That looks tricky, but to show it we just need help from our other school friend, Mr. Pythagoras. <laughs> Here we go. If our parabola point has coordinates x and x squared, then Pythagoras tells us the square of this green distance. And going straight down to the directrix, the square of the yellow distance is this. Now it's just a matter of going on algebra autopilot to check that these two expressions are equal. And that shows the two distances are the same. Easy peasy. The directrix is the secret ingredient for lots of parabolic magic. For the first magic trick, let's position the parabola on a piece of paper so that the red directrix coincides with the bottom edge of the paper. Now look at any point on the bottom edge, that one there, fold the paper so that the black point ends up on the focus. So there, fold, 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 right on top and unfold again. Okay. It looks as if the paper crease is a tangent of the parabola and that the touching point is right above the black point. And looks are not deceiving. Starting with any point at the bottom, folding results in a crease that is tangent to the parabola. If you do this for all the points of the directrix, you get all the tangents of the parabola. So why does this work? All those tangents suggest calculus, but you really don't need it. All you need is a little middle school algebra. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> anyway, I leave it as a challenge for you to give a proof in the comments. And if you're desperate, I'll give one possible proof at the very end of this video. Anyway, for the record, let's note that proving the second super property of the parabola is also easy peasy. The second property gives a really pretty way to create a parabola from scratch without having to calculate anything. Start with a piece of paper, mark a point close to the middle of one of the sides and perform the folding action for a bunch of points on the side. Then the parabola materializes as if by magic. Super super nice. Okay, after this little piece of paper magic, we're almost ready to conjure our ghosts. We just need one more super property of the parabola. And actually, you probably all know this one, although I'm guessing that only a few of you will have seen a proper explanation. Looking again at our paper folding, notice that this green triangle there gets folded smack on top of this identical pink triangle. And that means 
that the green angle and the pink angle are the same. right? And then the angle opposite the green is also of the same size. Now for what we are after, we just need that these two angles here are the same. We also don't need the directrix anymore, so let's get rid of that too. There's not much left of our picture, but it tells us something super interesting. Imagine the parabola is a mirror and the vertical line is a ray of light hitting the mirror. Then this ray of light will be reflected like this and the reflected ray will pass through the focus. But of course the same is true for any vertical ray of light and so all the vertical rays get focused on the, mm, well, focus. <laughs> Lucky that that's what we chose to call it. Of course this also works in the opposite direction. Any ray emanating from the focus will be reflected into a vertical ray. I'm sure that many of you are aware of this focusing property of the parabola and its myriad applications in the guise of parabolic reflectors and mirrors. Now, finally, <laughs> we are ready to conjure some ghosts. To begin, let's add another parabola to this picture, like so. Then it's clear that a whole sector of rays emanating from the red focus will end up passing through the green focus. Chances are you've seen this setup before in the guise of the mysterious whispering dishes at science museums. A whispering dish is exactly a circular paraboloid, the shape you get when you spin a parabola around its axis of symmetry. As such, the paraboloid inherits all the nice reflective properties of the parabola. The whispering dish in the picture is located at ScienceWorks, the science museum in my hometown of Melbourne. The focus of the dish is located inside the ring I'm pointing at. Okay, now take two of these dishes and place them 50 meters apart. Then if the junior mythologeress Lara whispers at the green focus, mythologer junior Carl will hear Lara's disembodied voice at the red focus. Really quite a stunning effect. <music> It's a great experiment, but what's not so great is the explanation on the whispering dish. What it says there is, the other person hears you clearly because the curved shape of the dish focuses the sound into the ring at their end. Pretty damn nothingy, isn't it? Well, most science museums try a little harder and at least feature this suggestive drawing here. But there is one very obvious question about this effect and it's a question that is seldom asked. Why isn't the sound muffled? Specifically, why doesn't a sound wave leaving the green focus in different directions then arrive at the red focus at different times? Hmm. Well, this amounts to asking whether all the yellow parts in this diagram are the same lengths. They don't look it, but surprisingly they are. And there's an easy explanation, just using our focal directrix super property. Don't believe me? Just watch. Let's bring back the two directrices of the two paraboli. And let's take a careful look at one of the yellow paths. What can we say about the length of this path? Well, let's see. Because of the focal directric super property, the red distance from the focus to the reflecting point on the parabola is the same as the distance from the reflecting point to the directrix. And of course, the same is true up on top. But this means that the length of the path from the red focus to the green focus is exactly the distance between the two directrix lines. And since this is the case for all paths, all paths have the same length. How easy and how pretty a proof is that? This equal length property is also important for many other really significant applications of parabolic reflectors, but strangely Unlike the focusing property, the equal length property is rarely mentioned by anybody. Okay, now what about ghostly Princess Leia? How do we conjure her? For this we use proper parabolic mirrors and instead of moving them apart, we move them close together. We then place Leia and our robot friend in the middle of the bottom mirror at the green focus. 
then we cut a hole in the middle of the upper mirror, just above the red focus. Then a hologram of layer materializes at the second focus. Now this is real mathematical magic. And on that happy note I will declare I am not happy. It's time for a mythologist sermon. These days here in Melbourne my junior mythologists Carl and Lara seem to spend half their time in maths class torturing quadratics. But they never get to see any of the beautiful maths I've shown you today, much less figure out why it works. If they didn't happen to have an annoying mythologer for a father they'd never find out about any of this. Well, except for our science museum's explanation which turns out to be a masterpiece of explaining nothing. This is especially puzzling and especially annoying because the simple maths that you need to explain all the super important and super applicable stuff properly is exactly the school maths that it's done ad nauseum. At the same time Victoria's maths textbooks are chock-a-block with pseudo applications like parabolic bike paths, quadratic types of cheese <laughs> and so on. I'm not making this up <laughs> and this is just the tip of a parabolic iceberg. <laughs> As my colleague Marty likes to say, our education authorities never miss an opportunity to miss an opportunity. I'd be very interested in finding out from you guys what's the state of educational affairs where you are. Do kids learn about the things I talked about today in maths class properly? at all? Let us know in the comments. And that's it from me for today. Okay, let's end on a satisfying mathematical note and tie up a loose end. Here's a simple explanation for why our paper crease from before just touches the parabola. If you want to figure this out for yourself, now is the time to avert your eyes and ears. <laughs> well, it's easy to read the equation of the yellow crease line of this diagram. For this we just need its slope and its y-intercept. The slope of the crease line is 2a, the negative reciprocal of the slope of the thin segment and its green y-intercept is minus a squared. May take you a second or two to convince yourself of this. And so we get this for the equation of the line. And then where does this crease line hit the parabola? Well, we just equate the line with x squared and solve for x. Okay, so there is exactly one solution at x is equal to a and that means that the crease touches the parabola at exactly the point we predicted. All is good, no loose ends, I'm happy again and we'll all be able to sleep tonight. And that's really it for today. <laughs>